Hey guys, uh, welcome to this video, which will describe how to use Cleopatra um, to do basic encrypt, decrypt operations and to manage your key pairs. Uh, Cleopatra is the front end for a crypto software GNUPG. It is a um, basically a key manager uh, for encryption keys. So when you first start Cleopatra, this is the uh, this is what you'll see. Uh, if you're brand new to encryption, you're going to need a new key pair. If you are not new to encryption, uh, you'll be able to import your current key pair from a file. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you have not used one. So we're going to do create new key pair. You now have the option to enter a name and email. Um, they're both optional, uh, but obviously for keeping track of which key is which, you're definitely going to want to put something in. So I'm going to put in John Smith. You could put your real name. You could put fake name. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, there's advanced settings here. This gives you the technical details of what your key will do, uh, how strong the encryption is. It defaults to RSA 2048 bits. Uh, that is very secure. Uh, you can increase it to 4096, up to 4096. Uh, it is more secure if it's 4096. That said, it will take longer to create the key pair, and it will create it will take longer to encrypt and decrypt uh, messages if you set it at that high rate. Uh, it's 2048 is also very secure, so I'm not really going to bother with doing the higher one here. Um, you also it sets the valid by default um, date for two years in the future. If you If you want to change that later, you can. So I wouldn't worry about it too much right now. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to create it, show details. It shows you all that stuff that was in the advanced options. I'm going to hit create. I'm going to have to make a passphrase now. If you put something in simple, like four letters, it's going to tell you that that's an insecure passphrase. You can choose to ignore it. But I would definitely not recommend doing that. You know, you want a secure passphrase for your encryption keys. Um, if someone gets a panned on your certificate file, and like they can break it if you have an insecure passphrase, and then they can get your private key, and they can break, they can read all your all the encrypted messages that have been sent to you. So I would definitely recommend a secure passphrase. So I'm going to enter one now. Create it. Great. New pair, key pair created successfully. Um, it gives you this fingerprint. It's kind of like a unique identifier. Then you have a few options for next steps. You can make a backup of your key pair. You can send public key by email, or you can upload public key to directory service. Um, the backup of your key pair is the one I really recommend doing. You know, if anything happens to this PC, uh, and this is your only copy, then you can't, you won't be able to get your private key back and you can't read any of these messages that have been sent to you. Um, so you, I definitely recommend making a backup and you should store it somewhere off this PC, you know, either in a cloud service or in a physical, like on a USB stick, stored somewhere securely in your home, for example. Um, so if you just do make backup of key pair, it defaults, the file name defaults to just the fingerprint. I'm just going to add John Smith at the end here so I know what's what. Um, when you do that, when you export a certificate like this, you're going to have to enter your passphrase. So enter your passphrase. Successfully exported. Um, the send public key by email will just access your default email client and create a new email with your public key in it. Um, if you use like Gmail through your browser, like most people, this isn't going to do much. Um, upload public key directory service. There's basically servers where you can like look up people's public PGP keys. Um, if you are the kind of person who ends up using encryption a lot in a public manner, then this is something that can definitely be very useful. But for now, I'm just going to skip this. So we're going to hit finish. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I will show you how to. De encrypt and decrypt messages. I'm just going to use it 
do your zoom, I'm just going to do it using your keys um, for this first bit, just for simplicity's sake. So this is us, John Smith. We've got a couple options on how to encrypt and decrypt messages. The first one is going to use files. So say you've got a text message that you want to um, decrypt. Okay, so we're going to use this file, plaintext.txt. It says, hello and welcome to Cleopatra. We are going to encrypt and decrypt this file. So the first way to do this is just hit this, sign slash encrypt. Pick that file. Um, you can sign it or you end encrypt it, or you can just sign it, or you can just encrypt it. Um, Right now, we'll just do both. Um, so I'm just encrypting for me, not for others. Uh, when you do this for real, when you're sending messages, you're pretty much going to do, you're going to uncheck that one and just do encrypt for others. Um, we're going to pick, this is the source. Well, no, so we have the source. This is the output. I'm going to put the output in the main Cleopatra file because when we decrypt it, it'll go back to being a txt file of the same name, and I don't want to be in the same folder. So we're going to sign encrypt. We're going to use our passphrase here. Okay, signing and encryption succeeded. So finish. Now, let's see what we got here. Cleopatra, this is what we have. This is the file. It's encrypted. It's a bunch of nonsense. Can't read it. It's not useful to us. The only way to get this decrypted is to decrypt it using the private key um, from our certificate. So we're going to do decrypt. Okay. Help you can set the output folder. I'm just going to set the same one. You can either discard the file. You can hit save as. Or save all, I mean. So I did save all, and this is the output. Exactly the same as the input file. So that worked. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is through the clipboard. So say you're saying you're just doing this all through email, um, you want to know, you want to encrypt like a paragraph that you're sending an email. So what you want to do is just highlight it, you hit copy, <clears throat> go to Cleopatra, go to clipboard, encrypt, add recipient. For this case, we're just going to do ourselves. Hit next. Encryption succeeded. So now what that means, because we're all doing this on clipboard, what, what happened was it encrypted the message and then it put that encrypted message in your clipboard. So if I go to edit, paste, this is the PGP message. So if I'm sending the, so if I write up a paragraph, so I, I say, I want to send this sentence to someone through email. If I can do that. Then I'll delete this. And then I'll just send this to the other person. Now, assuming this assumes that I am encrypting that with their public PGP key, not mine. Um, which I'll show you how to do that in a second, but right now, so this is it. You just send that message and they can decrypt it. So how they would decrypt it using that same method, they would just highlight this, they would copy it, they would come down here, go to clipboard, go to decrypt. Decryption succeeded, hit finish, and then edit, paste. There you go, easy peasy. So that's kind of like how the basics of how to do it. Um, the other way you can do it is just with this notepad here. So you enter it. So say I just did, <clears throat> it's basically the same thing, except you don't have to use um, the, the clipboard. 
So I just want to sign and encrypt this. Done. Decrypt it. Done. You know, the, you can change the recipients here. It just defaults to you. Um, but obviously, if you're doing it to other people, that changes. So I've got a friend. His name is Matt Driscoll. I want to send him an encrypted message. He has sent me his public PGP key. So we have this right here. OK. That's what this looks like. Begin by PGP public key block and public PGP public key block. So how do we do that? First, we need to add him. Um, Add, add his certificate. So we're going to import Metro School Public Key PGP. Um, you're going to have to mark it as valid, and you need to certify it to do that. So you're just going to set yes here. You certify with yourself. Certify. Certification successful. So now I've got I've got me, and I've got my friend Matt Driscoll. So I want to send a message to Matt. So how do I do that? I basically, like like I showed you before, I've got basically got three ways I can do it. I just do this. We'll say I want to do this. Okay, you can you can do you can sign it. So basically, what the signing does is it proves that it came from you, and he'll have your information. Um, but you don't need to sign it. So we'll just un un unsign it. And so we're not encrypting for me. We're just encrypting for our friend Matt Driscoll here. Okay. So I'm going to pick that one, and then I'm going to store it in the main directory there. OK, I'm going to encrypt. So encrypt self-warning. None of the recipients you are encrypting to be seems to be your own. So basically, once I encrypt this, I'll have an encrypted message, and I'll, I'll have no way to decrypt it. But that's OK, because this is a message that's going to my friend, Matt Driscoll, not to me. So I'll hit to continue, finish. So then I'll have this. This is an encrypted message that I can't decrypt. Okay, I can try to decrypt it. Watch. Decryption fails. No secret key. Uh, and like I showed you before, you can do that with the other ways. They works exactly the same. So let's copy this. Notepad, recipients, others, Driscoll. Yep, so basically, this was the I encrypted it. This is the message. I can't decrypt it. I don't have the secret key. Matt has a secret key, so if I send him this message an email address, he can decrypt it using Cleopatra on the other side very easily. Um, and you can also do it the same way like I showed you before, using Clipboard. Same deal. But that's pretty much the basics on how to use this. Um, To give, if you want to, if you want Matt to be able to send messages back to you, you're going to want to be send him your public key, which you can get by doing that. So you go basically go double click on your name, hit export. You know, most of the time when you're doing this, you're going to be doing an email address. So what what you should do is have this as an optional. Um, what I recommend you doing is have this as an optional signature that you can just send people via your email. This comment section up top here is optional, so you can get rid of that. So I'm going to put, make a file, um, new text document, John Smith Public Key. Um, if you do it, have it end with GPG so it can be imported. Um, now, 
obviously if you're just sending this as part of an email address, not as a file, like you don't need to care about the extension or anything like that because they can just copy and paste it in. Um, I would get, I would take the comments out. You don't have to. So there you go. And that's your PGP public key block. And you could just send that to people that you want to communicate with uh, securely. They can encrypt messages using this, and then you can decrypt it using your private key. It's very simple. So that is the basics of Cleopatra. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and have a good day.